Right, hello, hello, hello. How are we going, folks? Welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. We are carrying on the 800 subscribers celebration, and we are carrying on with the subscribers questions stroke requests. And today we have got one from channel subscriber, channel supporter on buymeacoffee.com. And I'm blessed to say a dear friend, Heli Monster, has asked, I'd like to know your favourite movie soundtrack, preferably a predominantly metal-based one. Well, soundtracks, let's get into it. I mean, let's not get into film scores and all that stuff. I mean, I suppose the main one is uh, Exorcist, Tubular Bells. But that's not what you meant, is it? So, I think I think you can guess what my favourite soundtrack is. Um, I never have just the one, so I thought I'd, I've got all my soundtracks here. I was going through it, and I thought I've not actually got that many soundtracks. And then I started. Oh, there's one. Oh, and there's another one. Um, there's a couple that aren't metal, so I've just put them to the sides, and I'm just going through predominantly metal soundtracks so the the cool thing about soundtracks that isn't the case anymore is that you used to get exclusive songs on there and you used to get oh, and, and off the back of that you would get introduced to new bands and i don't know when you bought the soundtrack and opened up the booklet you saw like some photos and that you kind of got a vibe of the film before you got to watch it especially like as a teenager when um you know maybe a soundtrack to a film or something like that you know it has it wasn't out in the cinema yet or you weren't old enough to watch it or so on and so forth but first one of the first cds i ever bought my pocket money and look the cd's all smashed but here we go is the lost boys i love this album i love every song on it it's not really metal but um it is kind of rocking and it's very very 80s Another great real 80s vampire soundtrack is Fright Night as well. Although that is more... This is still, but it's still much more 80s pop. I've never bought a copy of it, though. And when I thought about getting a copy of it, I just uh, just found it on YouTube. But, um, but yeah, Lost in the Shadows. I always wanted to cover that in one of my bands. Um, you got two great songs from In Excess. In Excess are a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, good times and uh, where is it? Laying down the law, two really good songs. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw in excess about two thousand seven. If I was in the band, I would have made them pull out good times. I was like, do you know what's going to make the crowd erupt as soon as they hear the opening calls? Dun, 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 dun. We got to do good times, but um, they didn't hire me, so yeah, they missed out. Uh, Cry Little Sister, obviously a classic. How many times has that been covered? But you can't beat the original, and you can't beat the original either. I think Aiden did a cover for the Lost Boys 2 soundtrack, and I liked the chorus. I liked how it like, kicked in. It was kind of heavy, but still can't. And the, the Marilyn Manson one was just crap. Um, I Still Believe by Tim Capello. That song is amazing. Uh, Beauty Has Our Way as well. Yeah, great song. So yeah, Lost Boys, I love. Love that album. But the main one, you can't mess with it, The Crow. So many good memories for me. Like f Straight off the bat, you've got The Cure. This is a song exclusive for the, the soundtrack. The song perfectly sums up both the original comic, sorry, graphic novel, Um it, it sums up the book and the film perfectly. I'll tell you what, I hear that that music and the song kicking in at the bit before the finale of the comic book when Eric basically just goes to the window and says, Shelley, I'm coming home, and then just burns the house down. And then he's walking away from the... So you've got the house in the background on fire, and he's just walking out loaded with guns with the cat on his shoulder. That section of the book, you can play that along... You can play Burn along with that. But, you know, this is the first time I heard Stone Temple Pilots. This is the first time I've heard Nine Inch Nails. And this song obviously introduced me to Joy Division because it is a Joy Division cover. One of my... In fact, I would, I would say Darkness would be my favourite Rage Against the Machine song, actually. I think the, the solo on that is 
amazing. That lovely blues, bluesy sort of slows. You know that bit. Um, but I just love the. You can play this on really loud and you're rocking out, but you can play this album really quiet and just chill to it as well. It's great. Helmet. But the first time I heard Pantera was on this album, the badge. That's a cover though, isn't it? I can't remember who did the original version. Poison Idea? Or was it DRI? I want... It was a punk band though. It might have been Poison Put in the comments section, Pantera, The Badge. Who did the original? I think it's Poison Idea, but... Something's telling me it might be DRI or someone like that. Like a, a punk band with three letters. Don't know. Can't remember. Um, Jesus and Mary. Check. Is Jesus. No, let's echo in the Bunnyman on this. Um, and, and, you know, it can't rain all the time. What a beautiful song. Um, yeah, great songs on all, all. Every song on this throughout the album is awesome. And, yeah, it perfectly sums up the, the atmosphere of the film. Um, the, you can actually also get the score to this as well. Um, that's another thing as well. There's a difference between a soundtrack and a score. Um, so you know that beautiful orchestral music throughout the film. You can actually get that on another disc. I've not got it though, but maybe there's like some special edition now with like two CDs that you can get. Hell, Rollins Band, Ghost Rider. How heavy is that? And um, yeah, brilliant. Colour Me Once, Violent Femme, beautiful, atmospheric, melancholy song. Stone Temple Pilots, Big Empty, amazing chorus on that. Yeah, I think I think this is the one. Slightly, follow, yeah, these are my two. These are my two. But I've got a couple other here, others here that we might as well go through. Um, a predominantly rock, when it comes to predominantly rock orientated soundtracks, you can't beat singles. I think singles paved the way for friends, really. This is a group of people living in a flat in different apartments of this block of flats. And they're friends that go out dating. They kind of, some date each other. Rather than low work, um, hanging out in a poxy coffee bar, they hang out in a club that has Alice in Chains playing and a fake grunge band with Matt Dillon on vocals and Eddie Vedder plays the drummer. And Chris Cornell is in it as well. And um, yeah, it's a much more, I think, more of a reliable summary of the 90s in that part of the world. Fantastic soundtrack. I mean, now you've got Wood by Alice in Chains. This was the song, the this was the album that launched that song. It would later appear on Dirt, but, and um, it ain't like that as well. I think... No, I'm thinking of Pearl Jam. So you've got two Pearl Jam songs on this album as well that were recorded during the sessions of 10, but not on 10. So if you're a Pearl Jam fan, you need to get 10 and get this. Although I do think some anniversary edition of 10 has got these songs included on it. But yeah, State of Love and Trust. Excuse me. And um, is there another one on here? Maybe I'm talking crap. Breathe. Yeah, by Pearl Jam. Yeah, you got to get them. Um, Paul Westerberg did the uh, main theme to the thing. You know, um, he was in... What band was Paul Westerberg in? Was he in the... I want to say the Heartbreakers, but no, that's not. Paul Westerberg, sorry. What did I just say? There's two songs by Paul Westerberg in here. I'm trying to think of the band he was in before. It doesn't matter. But yeah, so you got Wood, Alice in Chains. Two exclusive, although not exclusive anymore, songs from Pearl Jam. You've got Seasons by Chris Cornell. The solo, um, a solo song from Chris Cornell and a sound garden. You've got Chloe. Um, Chloe Damon by, and Crown of Thorns by Mother Love Bone. I love, love, love that song. Mother Love Bone's a great album, but um, I love that song, Chloe. And um, Pearl Jam even covered it. I saw uh, video footage recently of uh, Pearl Jam covering that song. For those that don't know, Mother Love Bone. Pearl Jam formed off of the ashes of Mother Love Bone. I'm summing that up really, you know, in a sentence. There's a bit more to it than that, but, you know. Mud Honey is on here. The Love Mongers. 
got Jimi Hendrix song on there. Screaming Trees. Love Screaming Trees as well. Mark um, Mark uh, Lanigan, no longer with us. Bloody hell, hardly anyone's any longer with us on this. Slane Staley's gone. Chris Cornell, Mark Lanigan. And you got Smashing Pumpkins on there as well. Yeah, great soundtrack. Great great little film, actually, singles. Check it out. It's not, it wasn't that big over here, but it's good. It's worth a watch. Uh, this one, really good. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. What, again, what have you got on here? You've got Slaughter, Winger, Kiss, God Gave Rock and Roll to You. I oh, know, I oh, know, I oh, know. Um, but you got... <clears throat> the reason I bought this, The Perfect Crime by Faith No More. One of Faith No More's best songs. It's not on any of their albums. Go to Hell by Megadeth. Do you remember the bit when the robot Bill and Ted are marching Bill and Ted up the cliff to throw him off? And they, to, you know, they grab him. Do, 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 do. You know, as they marching them up. Yep, that's Mega Def. Go to hell. you got Tommy the Cat by Primus. Uh, Junior's Gone Wild by King's X. We spoke about King's X the other day. you got a couple of Steve Vai. Obviously, because Steve Vai does the old... Um, Richie Cotson, who, you know, did the album. He's just done an album with Adrian Smith. Yeah, another good one. Now, these are two I've got, mainly... So the, the the I think the classic metal soundtrack is Judgment Night because you had hip hop artists and metal artists collaborating together and that was like a big thing. I've never bought that soundtrack. I've never got it. But um, you had a similar sort of thing with the Spawn soundtrack, and I'd quite like to watch Spawn again because I think it kind of the criticism of it was that it was sort of watered down for a mainstream audience. But I bet compared to the crap that comes out now, I bet it's a masterpiece. And that had a similar sort of thing. It was metal artists and hip-hop artists collaborating. I've, I did have it at one point, but I can't find it. So there's Spawn. But there's these two. There's uh, Dracula 2000 and uh, Heavy Metal 2000. And I bought these mainly... Because um, both have got an exclusive Pantera track on them. Although, those two songs are now available. Oh. I just thought about it. Queen of the Damned. I got bought that. But I didn't buy it myself. But someone did buy me the soundtrack. Queen of the Damned. I've not seen that for a long time though. I don't think I had it anymore. But that was a pretty good soundtrack. Crap film. But um soundtrack was alright. Uh, let's get on with what we've got. So, the two Pantera tracks that I'm talking about are actually available now. There was a best of Pantera, like a very best of Pantera. I think you get like a, I think you get a, a DVD with all the videos on it, and then a CD where it's basically a best of, and then these two songs at the end. So it's kind of redundant now. But um, Dracula 2000, does anyone remember that film? We get Power Man 5000, Disturbed, Slayer, System of a Down, Monster Magnet, Godhead. Um, Lincoln Park, Pantera, Avoid the Light. Now, when I heard Avoid the Light, it was it was in the club, and I knew it was Phil Anselmo singing, but it didn't sound like Pantera. I thought it was one of the many pa Phil Anselmo um, side projects. It took me ages to track it down, and that's why I got it. But yeah, you got uh, Stack X, Head PE, Tap Root, Endo, Flybanger, Half Cox, and Saliva. But yeah, pretty naff film, but pretty good soundtrack. Now, Heavy Metal, the original Heavy Metal, came out in the 80s, and that's an animated classic in a 80s comic book kind of way. I've not got the film um, or the soundtrack, but the soundtrack is pretty cool. And the film's worth watching if you can track it down. It's like a load of mini, mini stories sort of threaded together with... And every story has its own ver has its own style of animation. It's a pretty cool film, um, and it had like a uh, Black Sabbath Mob Rules. The original version of that song was on that soundtrack, and it had a couple of like proggy, rocky kind of songs in it. But yeah, check out Heavy Metal. The sequel, Heavy Metal Two Thousand, which is a sequel to the color, kind of gives you an idea. Um, don't bother watching the film because the film is crap. But the soundtrack's pretty cool. So, look, this reads like the last one. So we've got um, F A K K U, 
pack you. Uh, that's a minute. I'm guessing that's something from the film. Monster Magnet. Um, MDFMK. Pantera. Immortally Insane. An exclusive track at the time. But it was a really good song. He got Insane Clown Posse on here. System of a Down again. Days of the New. Queens of the Stone Age. Sinistar. Machine Head. Alcoholocaust. I think that was on the Supercharger album. If I remember rightly. Full Devil Jacket. Hate Department. Pull ya. I remember them. I remember them. Uh, Apartment 26. That's uh, Geezer Butler's son's band. Billy Idol, Cold Chamber, and Baja. There you go. Um, yeah, crap film. Pretty cool soundtrack. Now, when it comes to soundtrack scores, one of my, one of my favourites is uh, Zombie Flesh Eaters with uh, Fabio Frizzy. Fri Fabio Frizzy. Fri or Freezy, um, did the score to this. And what I thought was really cool was uh, death metal band Sulfur Eon on their first album. This is uh, Swallowed by the Ocean's Tide. Closing track of this album is a cover of the theme of Zombie Flesh Eaters. And it's really fucking cool. Like, I, pl I played it. A mate of mine who um, was banging to his horror but wasn't into metal, not even in the slightest. And I went, I know you don't like, just listen to this. And I put the headphones on and played him that. And he was like, Fuck, this is really good. So that's pretty cool. But I'm going to give you the um, a little curveball here. So, yeah, my favourite soundtracks are definitely these two. But one of my all-time favourite soundtracks, and I I used to play the video, the ending credits and stuff like that. I used to love the music to this film. And I managed, just through random night shift searching for random crap, I managed to find the soundtrack to this on CD. And it's one of my treasured possessions. So this is Cyber City Oedo 808. Now, if you're into your anime, if you're into your manga, so you love, you know, I was never deep into anime, but, um, you know, I watched Akira and Ghost in the Shell and all the rest of it, and I started buying a couple of the videos as a teenager. I thought it was all cool. AD Police, uh, Ninja Scroll, films like that. But this was the best one. Cyber City Oedo 808. And all it was, it was a three-part series. That was it. it. Was All it was was three parts. And I wish they went on and, and, and they could have developed the characters. And I always, I, I kind of think, I wish they did a film where they, you know, explored the characters a bit better. But three 45-minute episodes and it's perfect. And it's three main characters and each episode, one of them's the star. So, um... Each one focuses on each character, but it follows three main characters where they're prisoners and they're given the opportunity to become policemen, basically in their own words, do the high risk jobs no one else wants. And every mission they accomplish, they get a little bit of their sentence reduced. Great stuff. Um, good fun. Very 80s flavoured. But the... This is all just, it's all just um, musical. It's, it's not um, instrumental. It's not, there's no vocals on it. And the guy that did this score, I suppose, um, he did computer games, but yeah, the only things I could find was, um, co yeah, computer games. Music composed, performed, and recorded by Rory McFarlane. I think he's no longer with us anymore either, but perfect. If you love your 80s stuff, this is a perfect, what's the word? Melding, like a perfect synergy of synthesizer-based music, but guitar-based music as well. Think like a good synth-based 80s soundtrack with Eddie Van Halen-style guitars over the top. It's awesome. I was so glad to find this. I got it for like 15 quid as well. Um, I remember sending it to... Uh, my buddy, David Ingram, who uh, no longer with us, God bless him. Um, I remember sending him this photo going, guess what I tracked down? And he was like, you bastard, where'd you find that? So, um, yeah, because he was the, other, the only other guy I knew that, that loved the soundtrack. So, yeah, there you go. That's my soundtracks. Hope that was good for you. And um, 
thanks as always. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, um, Heli Monster is a supporter of um, buy me a coffee. If you fancy uh, throwing me a couple of shekels and give me a bit of an incentive to keep going with the thing, and you know, who knows, maybe the channel can become a bit more more than a hobby. Um, do so if you feel like it. If not, don't worry. In the meantime, give us one of them. Consider subscribing if you so wish. Share this around. Let's see if I can get to a thousand subscribers before Christmas. As that way to finish off the year. So thanks for watching as always, guys. All the best. Take care.